enjoyed the movie. I thought it was fantastic. I really like it. Yeah. But, but no, I, I thought it was just really, I thought it was so beautifully kind of sad. <laughs> it's a good way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, how I wanted to know uh, my sort of first question here was just kind of how you came to be involved in this project and what it was that kind of really attracted you to to the project and to the character as well. The Mikey, the director, had asked me to be in um, uh, to, to to come to his university and do some discussions with the with the students about sightseers and also about art, and so we uh, so we sort of became friends during during those little little meetings, and then uh, he just uh, decided to write write it. I think he kind of he was wanting to do something and he uh, decided to write it for me and for Ailish uh, Cahill, who um, he also knew in a kind of similar way. So it was very, so it, it was very flattering, you know, he gave me the script, brilliant, brilliantly written. I, th I just thought it was um, uh, very true to life and very believable uh, script. It's not, it's, it's a very, it, it was just, just seemed like a brilliant thing to act in because it's very, Often, sometimes, not not mundane, but every it's it's ordinary life. Uh, it's not not over egg in the pudding, you know. In any, at any point in the film, and that's what I loved about it. And it was the chance to to do a, a good, very involved character. Mm. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, you mentioned it's so real. It feels so real. These characters feel so authentic. I'm just interested to know, as an actor, is that easier or like harder to act? Because on paper, you would assume being so real is a kind of easier task. But actually, it's, it actually strikes me something that could be a bit more challenging. Well, it depends what type of an actor you are. And but for me, that's this is the perfect role. I I I, I like to do stuff that feels that is real and low key, but kind of has its own moments of detail and ways of making it heightened. So that was that was really it, it was a joy to do. Um and it it was it was hard in some ways, but um in a night it's it's a it was a nice challenge. Yeah. I, I was interested as well because often when you get um a kind of story whereby sort of one half of a couple uh, cheats on another, the narrative kind of tends to either place the partner who has been cheated on as either a real victim or as a kind of insufferable arsehole who deserves it. But I actually felt in this instance, Paul was kind of neither of those things. Was that quite interesting to play with? Yeah, well, again, it's it's a truthful thing, isn't it? There's no villains in in this piece and there's there's you know in life that's that's generally the truth people are usually find themselves in a compromised position they're a bit bored she wasn't she wasn't trying to be evil she was just you know not not getting what she needed to out of him you know um so it, yeah it was an interesting it was it was interesting because it, it didn't overplay that you know and that's what i loved about it and um their reconciliation is sort of slightly <laughs> It's good. It feels good, but it's all there's an edge to it. Obviously, uh, yeah. It's, it's it was it was lo a lovely way to do it. I think yeah. good writing. And I wanted to know too about how much kind of backstory you create when you get a take on a project like this, because obviously there's a whole relationship that they've had before. We, we, we this kind of this story starts. I just wondered, you is it is it do you, is it something you have like a kind of process on? Do you, is is it project by project where you kind of decide on backstories or not? Or do you, are you one of those actors who always likes to you know fill in the gaps? Yeah, uh, you uh, you do. I mean, a lot of that was actually spelled out quite in quite good detail from from Mikey's script so you, you get a very good sense of their past and the things that they've done together and the, the time when they were you know happier um uh, and for me it's kind of bringing it bringing elements of uh just myself to it a <laughs> bit and uh trying to trying to make the character rounded and believable and add, add humor despite despite you and i mean my, my, it's a very funny script as it is but um the trick with these kind of things is to get the tone right and to get the tone of the characters right and i think a big part of it is get, get getting up to speed with your co-star which you have to do really quickly <laughs> like no rehearsals so we, we were just into that so that was kind of that was it was well we were just quite well cast i think uh, mikey cast us quite well and uh yeah that's how that's how that worked but yeah yeah did you know Elish beforehand did you ever met her or worked with her before this project we met once we met once at, at lincoln 
university we watched <laughs> one of the screenings at Mikey's place and said hello and she and then she flew back to America so it was uh, uh, uh but we you know we got on well and that was good I watched her stuff she did a she did a brilliant film called Mad which Mikey sent to me and I thought that was amazing so we we, we were quite compatible sort of people it's good yeah, was, was it very? I mean, was it a very tight? But were the actors very, very much had to kind of stay on on script because it was such a naturalistic performance. It felt like there was kind of room for improv and kind of be, bringing some of yourself into the characters. Was that was that something that was encouraged on this? It was. Yes, it was. It was very. It was very tightly scripted, and we had a tight schedule, as you imagine. But often the camera was left to roll, and uh, there is there in the film now some 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 of the improv bits were were left in. But um, they, they were good. I mean, it's it, it's a way of almost rehearsing the scenes as well, isn't it? By jamming jamming a bit with your with your co-star. So some of those bits got left in. Was it improv when when he went because um, Paul really loves a B day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really loved that B day. I think there was some impro improv in there, but <laughs> most of that is Mikey's yeah. <laughs> particular obsession with. Yeah. Got a very nice B day. That's his actual house, you know. If you, you ever go there, use it. <laughs> oh, so you're shooting in Mikey's house for this? I'm sorry. You're shooting in Mikey's house? Did you say for this? Yes, it was his own oh. house, uh, and we worked with lots of his. Some of his students were were, were being um, were, were on the crew. It's very very nice. Very. Um, very skilled and eager young crew uh, uh, so that it was a, a nice nice environment and we didn't smash up his house or anything it was all right <laughs> <laughs> just smashing the b-day before you leave but i was going to ask was it I, i'm just to know as well was it always going to be uh in black and white was that something that would you found out very early on or because i don't really know how that kind of if, if that's something that can even be decided in post i'm not quite sure when those kind of decisions are but was that always the artistic um decisions you think um, for my kids it wasn't um it was it came later i think so it was a creative decision at, at the end of it um and they, i think they they you know um denied about it a bit but i think once they got used to it it was just this is the this was the way the film has to be i think it works brilliantly um hello yeah because uh, I've, I've seen both versions and i think it, it elevates it into something else but yeah, yeah, good, good one. And I was wondering too about uh, if you, could, as as a, as a kind of you know a writer yourself, I mean, and sort of an actor, are you are you able to sort of like relate to Paul's creative kind of lethargy, and how you know how that kind of how <laughs> it kind of gets on top of a bit? It can it can actually affect other parts of your life as well. It can make you just feel a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very close to home. All that all that stuff. Yeah. It's um. And you know, Mikey lives that as well. Um, uh, yeah, it's that. It's that. It, 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 writing takes over your entire life um, for a period of time, or maybe for forever, really. Um, and it turns you into a selfish and weird, depressed person, which um, I think <laughs> it's quite captured quite well. Because um, you, you, writers often don't have very good balance in their life. It's just. It's a. It, it, I think. Uh, probably most writers would say that um, you have to be obsessive to be good and so it often tip into weirdness <laughs> but um, yeah brilliant it's brilliant brilliant I mean that's that's this that's all you need to know about writing there all you... have you ever taken up something like tennis <laughs> no no mm. do sort of weird you sort of go out for weird distraction techniques and procrastination techniques which um you know i mean you're a you're a writer too you must know these things that go on yeah. in uh, your life <laughs> no it was nice I, I think i found just getting a dog was really helpful <laughs> oh, yeah, that gives you, yeah. yeah some dog walks focus yeah <laughs> um, i wanted to talk about the elephant in the room literally <laughs> uh, what was the because I know that, that I was, I, was that I love the whole like use of those kind of elephants it, it, it dotted around in this. What, 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 what did that something that was kind of in the script as well? And kind of just wondered what you might like, made of those like little moments and how they kind of impact the broader the broader story. Yes, that that was in the script. That was a detail that Mikey added, um, and uh, it's a, a subtle little 
character detail for them both. Um, he he doesn't like to talk about it, about the meaning of it, which I think which I shall respect actually, because I think it's um, it's a I think it's a detail that everyone can find their own thing with. No, I, I really like it. I think it's quite quite magical. Um, and uh, yeah. This, it, I, th I think it's just something you know he lives in that house and so every every day he went and in the period of writing he was thinking about all these little things he was living in as he was writing it um so i think that gives it a real texture and a real detail that you might not always get on if you just turn up at a set and do it you know so yeah, yeah. It strikes me that um, those little elephants strike me as a sort of thing an actor would maybe want to take home as a kind of souvenir from a project like this. I just wonder, do you do you do you take things like little little souvenirs from different shoots and keep them in your house? I'm going to show you what I've got right there. <laughs> so I was given. So there's the there's the um, the dinner scene. So I I have my oh. set scenes. Oh nice. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. I love. Mm. Which they, I guess they must. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, well, I was actually going to ask about the. I, I, I want to know Paul's secret recipe for those cheesy beans. Yeah. Well, they yeah. Look... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they look really good. But it's I wanted to know. Oh, sorry. It's such a single bloke's meal, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's for dinner tonight? Cheesy beans. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I was going to ask too about um, in terms of because I, I really enjoyed ah oh, I never know how to say that out loud <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to scream it or not <laughs> but I I just wondered if you if you had if you've been having any thoughts about directing again if that's something you'd like to to try again yeah well I've been working on several scripts I mean I did uh, uh, I, I mean that was a ah oh, was a real labour of love and a self funded um, thing that took over my life for a certain period of time. I, th I always thought the second one, the next one must be, I need more support and to have some bit more money. Um, so I've got several, well, there's two scripts, one, one film in development, which hopefully will come off at some point. And I'm working also on a television uh, idea with a company called HTM, uh, which is part of Hattrick. Um, so that's, yeah, these are, these are projects. We'll see, I hope so soon. It's a very long process. Yeah, because I was you shot that in your house, didn't you? Oh, is that right? But yeah, that was, it, but it was a different type of script to Mikey, so everything got smashed up. And it was I, was just, I was just about to say, I said, the people respect your house as much as you respected yeah. Mikey's. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I really, I really felt for Mikey doing it, but actually, everyone was. He said there was like a couple of little chips on the on the woodwork, and that was it. So it's fine, you know. So I, I felt for him. Never do. I'll never. I'll never. Get, I'll never do that. But uh, well, you never. You never know. Um, so my my final question, really, because I'm just like looking ahead, and I sort of do going through my kind of LFF schedules as I do in the build up to the film festival. And Sky Peels is actually a film that's really interesting. I mean, I love the kind of concept to that. I just wondered if you're all looking forward to finally seeing it come together. Come, well, unless you've seen it already. But I just wondered because when you get a little a project like that, which it seems is so, um, it's all about the kind of the, the look and the imagery and the visuals seem so striking from the images. Is it? Is it? make it especially exciting to to see it on the big screen it is yeah i have seen that i saw that at, his, at the cast and crew screening of uh, a couple of months ago which and it was brilliant um but this I, i'm seeing it at lff in front of the nft you know it's going to be amazing in that massive screen uh yes it, and it is exactly that and there's brilliant sound design and uh, a very interesting atmosphere and tone in it and a, an amazing performance by um uh, the, the lead actor in it who's a fantastic uh, performer um so we'll yeah really look forward to that that's Faraz Pope, who's um yeah yeah just, just very quickly I was going to say because you just made me think of a question actually but which is that the NFT is probably my, I think that's my favorite screen in, in London I just wonder what's your favorite if you could direct it if you directed another movie and you could choose any cinema to put it on in what would you choose <laughs> well I, I I mean I like too many but I, I like the um yeah, the um, let me think. So, pro I mean, probably I like the Prince Charles. I like the Ritzy in in Brixton because it feels like home. Uh, and uh, yeah, too many. I live. I live now. Uh, I mean, anywhere, anywhere that will have me. <laughs> 
I think it's off and at the Rio has been we've had some amazing nights at the Rio. I'm just listening too many, too many cinemas, but um those uh, those cinemas which uh, you get a nice crowd in. It's all about the crowd in it. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm hoping to be in the crowd as well for Sky Peel. So maybe I'll I'll see you in there <laughs> during the yeah. other yeah. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. Best of luck with the release of the movie. Cheers. Yeah, all the best. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!